assembly language tutorials chapter 10 again here we have just one section and let's go through it this is a very quick one and very small modules we talk about structures and macros now you would have heard of structures in C and C++ macros also you would have heard in C++ and C how does it work it works because actually it doesn't work you know in assembly we even we here we have these concepts but in memory what you have seen till this point like our entire course what you have seen till this point that's all what's happening actually this structure and macro it doesn't exist it's just a construct for helping the programmer to be able to write more code in less time less just it's like programmer productivity but in memory what you have learned till this point so that's all there is to it and that's sufficient to find to work to start with disassembling and reverse engineering that's all sufficient there but still I wouldn't want my viewers to be just left behind and this is not a even though this is focused on security aspects computer security and assembly is very very essential there if you want to do something towards research but anyway I would also want that people to have this assembly programming language as a tool to build softwares as well and eventually how the compiler works uh, maybe developing your own programming languages who knows so that's why I would touch on these aspects as well so that's why even the structures and macros are just kind of a construct in the assembler and they do not exist but when the assembly happens for a source file so everything what we have seen till date that's all there is to it so this is just for programming productivity to cre create those constructs with the, the help of these things we and like I had said in the previous video probably the first video like MASM is an industrial strength assembler so it's like a general purpose it allows you to do anything so let's talk about structures and macros this is my demo So, structures are grouping of fields, like if you see the uh, the quick notes there, so that's all uh, what happens in a structure. So you have num1 and num2 fields somewhere and you want to group them, so you use structure. And macros are also, suppose you, written, you have written some code in, in an area and you want to reuse that code, just like we have seen our prologue and epilogue in previous uh, advanced procedures chapter like there was a code repetition there so we use enter and leave so that helped us that's uh, that's not a macro that's a directive a similar ma masm d directive and that's actually you could say that it works something like macro it expands so after the assembly happens so now enter is just for uh, push EVP and move EVP ESP so like you are going to create your own stack but in macro you could define your own macros something and you could reuse the code so those code would be copied wherever the macro is called inline let's see a demo and it would make perfect sense so this is a structure that's how it looks now you define a structure type this is a location which is of coordinate type so our chord is the structure and it has two members which are of uh, D word uninitialized here this is the way you could initialize them and you could use them this way like location and dot this is perfectly similar to C and C++ so there also you have a dot reference now these are taken care by the assembler so otherwise it wouldn't run actually so this is like I said this is just a programming construct to help a programmer in machine it's completely different I will show you in a bit so that's how you reference them and move uh, data to EAX and EBX so let's set up a breakpoint here now we know that when we created the core type so we have 1 and 2 so X is 1 and Y is 2 so if we debug it
now EX is cleared out cleared out we executed that line so X value which is this guy got stored into EAX and EBX also got its value so that's how you could create your own structure and uh, see that now here is a macro like I used to declare XOR EX EX to clear out the register so I've done is put a name there and call it macro and end M like we have NP for a proc or procedure and just call it so that's how you call a macro now let's see it in a debugger our immunity debugger I guess we are right there so you see that XOR EAX so I run it so this is the first line XOR EAX EBX ECX EDX you saw that it's just you know the assembler takes care of that macro and generates this thing so this is what's really happening and then next is move EAX so this 400 so it's a memory location and from there it's taking that value 1 and putting into EAX and likewise it is doing for EBX so it's just moving something from the memory into register that's all that's happening there so if you look towards the right top so all the registers are being cleared now EAX will get value 1 and EBX will get value 2 So that brings to the end of our this chapter, structure and macros. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, as an exercise, I would encourage the viewer to create a linked list using structures. And let me know if you find it exciting that if you could figure it out. All the things that are possible in any language like C++ or Java, Python, it's also possible in assembly. Way before, like 15, 20 years ago th there was no programming languages as such it was only assembly so people used to write code in that way so once you learn this thing you would really appreciate how the heck they build what we see today like it was uh, like in order to fully appreciate their work you have to go through these things your own research and learn these things now for security professional these are a must like uh, for finding a vulnerability or if there is a closed source program you want to reverse it so we see uh, all the code in assembly only so we see run a debugger and see what is doing when it is calling another function when it is calling the if it is in windows so when it is calling a windows api so sometimes the debugging symbols are also not available so how you go about that stuff like that it's very essential for uh, us at least security professionals and for a developer uh, and by the way I, I must say you that without even learning assembly you could develop any application like Linux kernel if you see the Linux kernel I cloned the Linux kernel like uh, last week and I didn't see any line of assembly code there whatever it's there is just for documentation it's not being used for anything so Linux uh, developed Linux so Linux has removed like all the things so you could do anything in C today so but still there could be also chances when you would stumble into assembly and it's uh, if you know that so you could really do great things also for optimization and suppose you think that your program you have written in the best way possible and still you feel that it's slow so you could probably look at the listing file and see what the compiler has generated for you for your code and if you know assembly you could figure out why it is taking that much time so for optimization it's very good if you know assembly uh, I, I hope you like this course these videos so far and I will catch you guys in the next one have a good day subscribe to this channel bye bye